Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar to discuss West Virginia American Waters Source Water Protection Plan updates. You should be connected to the visual portion of this webinar through your computer. At this time, you should see a slide that is titled Webinar Logistics. You should be connected to this webinar's audio through your phone. If you are not yet connected through the phone, please dial in using the call-in information presented on this slide. Once you're connected to the audio, if you hear an echo, please turn off your computer speakers. If you are not able to connect to the WebEx platform and therefore cannot view the presentations, you can still listen in through your phone and you will be able to hear the presentations from our speakers. This webinar is being recorded for note-taking purposes. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know a little bit more about who you will be hearing from today. My name is Kathleen McAllister and I work for Horsley Witten Group. We have been involved in source water protection and wellhead protection work for decades across the country. Personally, I have been involved in water quality and source water protection in West Virginia for the past five years with West Virginia American, the state of West Virginia, and the US EPA. My colleague Gemma Kite will be assisting with this webinar and she has also been involved in source water protection work in West Virginia for the past few years. Jennifer Heyman is the Source Water Protection Program Manager for American Water's Mid-Atlantic Division, and she was previously the West Virginia American Lead on Source Water Protection. Erica Pockin is the State Lead for West Virginia American Source Water Protection efforts. I'm sure many of you on today's webinar know these folks. So today we'd like to share information on the draft Source Water Protection Plans and get your input. First, we'll cover some logistics about the webinar software that you'll be using, and then we'll provide an overview of source water protection concepts, regulatory requirements, plan components, and we'll talk a little bit about updates since the 2016 plans. We encourage you to type your questions into the Q&A box in the lower right corner of your screen throughout the webinar. For those of you just listening in on the phone, we will reserve the last 10 minutes of the webinar for taking comments over the phone. We'll talk a little bit about how to do this in just a little bit. So let's spend a few minutes making sure everyone can access all of the features of the webinar software. If you would like to view the presentations larger than what is shown in the webinar screen box, please select the icon to the right in the view screen as shown by the red circle on this slide. By clicking on this, you will maximize to full screen. Once you are in full screen mode, you can zoom in and out of the view box by clicking on the plus or minus signs on the left hand side. To return back to the previous normal screen mode, please select the icon to the right of the view screen as shown by the red circle on this slide. Click on this icon to return to normal screen mode. You will need to do this in order to ask questions throughout the webinar in the Q&A box. Again, we welcome questions from our participants. In order to ask a question, please use the Q&A box. If the Q&A box is not already located at the bottom right of your screen, please navigate to the bottom center of the view screen and select Q&A by clicking on the circle icon with three dots. Once the Q&A box has appeared in the bottom right corner of your screen, type your question into the message box. Make sure that you select all panelists before submitting your question. This setting will ensure that speakers see your question. Hit send when you're ready to submit. Note that your submitted question will only be seen by panelists. You can also type a question into the chat box and it will be seen by all webinar participants. If the chat box is not displayed on the right-hand side of your screen, you can navigate to the bottom of the view screen and open the chat box by clicking on the icon that looks like a comment bubble. This should appear next to the circle icon with the three dots. I will read questions aloud from the Q&A box at the end of the presentation, and I will provide an answer. Depending on time and appropriateness of the question, not all questions will be answered. Again, for those of you just listening in on the phone, we will reserve the last 10 minutes of the webinar for taking comments. So 
So to provide a little bit of background, West Virginia American Water has been serving customers in West Virginia since 1886. Currently, they serve 530,000 people in 19 counties and 360 communities, which represents about one third of the state's population. West Virginia American operates eight water treatment facilities, two wastewater facilities, 4,300 miles of water main, and 10,400 fire hydrants with an outstanding environmental compliance record. Okay, on to source water protection. So what do we mean when we say source water protection? Well, really we're talking about identifying potential risks to the drinking water supply and what can be done to reduce those risks to maintain the quality of the source. Source water protection planning includes delineating watershed protection zones, identifying potential sources of contamination, and developing risk management strategies. And what is a watershed exactly? At a very basic level, a watershed is the area of land where all of the water that drains off of it goes into the same place. That can be a river, a stream, a lake, or groundwater. What that also means is that water can carry potential pollutants with it into those rivers, streams, lakes, and even into groundwater. What you see on this slide is a general description of West Virginia American Water's treatment process. Water is withdrawn from wells, lakes, or rivers and brought into a treatment plant. From there, dirt and other particles are removed from the water and those settle into the bottom of holding tanks. After that, water passes through filters to purify it more. Disinfection is done to kill germs and bacteria. And before the water leaves the plant, Corrosion control testing is done to ensure that the water won't corrode plumbing systems. Ultimately, that water is then pumped throughout the distribution system to water towers for storage before coming out of your tap. As many of you may know, there are laws that protect public drinking water sources. At the federal level, the Safe Drinking Water Act requires states to conduct source water assessments. But source water protection planning is done under this act as a voluntary state-led program. In 2014, West Virginia passed Senate Bill 373, which established statewide source water protection planning requirements for utilities, as well as regulations requiring above ground storage tank or AST owners to coordinate with water systems if located near drinking water intakes. In 2015, West Virginia Senate Bill 423 changed the AST rules with some indirect, indirect implications for source water protection. Before we move forward, I just wanna talk about a few key terms. First, the zone of critical concern or ZCC is an area along streams that warrants more detailed scrutiny due to its proximity to surface water intakes. Length is based on a five hour time of travel to the intake plus a quarter mile below the intake. Width is 1,000 feet from each bank of principal stream and 500 from tributaries draining to principal stream. The zone of peripheral concern, or ZPC, extends beyond the ZCC by an additional five hour travel time, which creates a protection zone of 10 hours above an intake. The width is the same as the ZCC. As an example, this slide depicts zones of critical concern for the Kanawha Valley water treatment plant. At the end of this webinar, we'll point out how you can access these types of maps and updated plans for each water system. A potential source of significant contamination, or PSSC, is a facility that stores, uses, or produces substances with the potential for significant impact if released into the source water of a public supply. This could be an above ground storage tank, a manufacturing facility, a landfill, or even a car wash. This slide depicts some additional examples of source water contamination, such as fertilizers and pesticides, runoff from roads, hazardous waste sites, and underground storage tanks. A 
Okay, back to the source water protection plans. As, as mentioned, West Virginia Senate Bill 373 requires that certain components are included in source water protection plans and updates. This includes operational information related to supply, demand, and storage, an inventory of potential significant sources of contamination, a management plan to address PSSCs, a contingency and communications plan for responding to drinking water supply contamination events, a technical and financial feasibility analysis of alternative supply sources and source water monitoring systems. The plans were originally due on July 1, 2016, and updates must be provided every three years. One of the main components of the source water protection plans is an inventory of PSSC information. West Virginia American Water pioneered the development of a map-based tool to identify PSSCs and compiled that information into a single database that can be regularly updated. This database is searchable and includes reporting capabilities. Data sources include regulatory information like permits, aerial imagery, infield assessments, and local knowledge. The database also allows West Virginia American Water to maintain confidentiality requirements. West Virginia American Water has developed a source water monitoring program that combines continuous water quality indicator monitoring, monitoring with advanced organics analyses to optimize treatment operations and identify the presence of potential contaminants. The photo on the right side of your screen shows a source water monitoring panel, panel that is continually monitoring for pH, temperature, dissolved oxygen, dissolved organic carbon, turbidity, conductivity, and oxidized reduction potential. These panels were installed at all West Virginia American water treatment plants in 2015. In addition, West Virginia American is currently implementing an advanced event detection system for the online monitoring equipment that is capable of identifying statistical changes apart from baseline conditions that could indicate the presence of contamination. As part of the source water protection program, West Virginia American has an emergency response plan or contingency plan for investigating and responding to contamination events that have the potential to impact West Virginia American Water's drinking water sources. In addition, West Virginia American has a communications plan that in place that allows them to communicate with partner agencies and the public in case of a spill, contamination event, or other situation that poses a potential threat to public health and safety. The diagram on this slide shows West Virginia American Water's general approach to responding to a potential source water contamination event. Another component of the source water protection planning process is a feasibility study looking at alternative sources of water supply. West Virginia American Water conducted a feasibility study looking at alternative sources with the following options. Those that offered a secondary or alternative intake from a different source, capacity for five days of raw water storage, interconnections with another system on a different source, and other alternatives like groundwater. While these options have been evaluated, a final determination has not been made. Preparations for additional feasibility studies, including treatability, are currently underway. As previously mentioned, updates to the source water protection plans are required at least every three years by Senate Bill 373. As part of this update, West Virginia American Water conducted a full review and update of source water protection plans. Some key updates include updated system and storage information, a list of priority PSSCs, contingency plan and communication plan contact information, updated cost and rate impacts for sources of supply, management plan activities, and a summary of implementation status and challenges. As mentioned, water quality and treatability studies are currently underway for alternative sources of supply, and monitoring system improvements have been made. More details on that coming up on the next slide. In addition, West Virginia American Water conducted emergency preparedness and response tabletop exercises to test procedures outlined in their contingency and communications plans, 
and work together with partner agencies. West Virginia American also held a hazardous waste collection event funded by a DHHR source water grant with the West Virginia American Water Match. The goal of this event was to reduce pollution in waterways and engage with the public. 284 cars participated in the event and an estimated 19,912 pounds of hazardous household waste was disposed of properly. Back to improve monitoring capabilities. Since 2015, West Virginia American Water has expanded their source water monitoring capabilities. New equipment has been added at central locations and utilized as a resource for all West Virginia American Water systems. In 2016, West Virginia American Water added a flame ionization detector to the Kanawha Valley Water Treatment Plant for additional monitoring of fuels and oils. The Kanawha Valley and Huntington facilities are the only water treatment plants in West Virginia with advanced organics equipment and testing capability. In late 2017, West Virginia American Water installed a gas chromato chromatography or GC system that provides additional continuous monitoring for organics at the Kanawha Valley treatment plant. This monitoring data feeds into Orsenko's Organic Detection System, or ODS, along with monitoring data from the Huntington facility. In 2018, West Virginia American Water partnered with the U.S. Geological Survey, or USGS, to install monitoring equipment upstream of the Kanawha Valley treatment plant on the Elk River. This partnership involved a memorandum of understanding between West Virginia American Water and USGS for installation and operations and maintenance of the equipment. The next closest river gauge is 18 miles away, which made it difficult to determine velocity and flow predictions for the lower Elk River. This gauge was installed to me measure river stage and velocity. In addition, a pilot study is also underway to conduct in-stream monitoring of the Elk River upstream of the Kanawha Valley treatment plant. The items highlighted in blue on this slide are preparations that have been completed. Items in black reference the current activities of the upstream monitoring project on the Elk River. So what can you do? Well, today we welcome your questions and comments via the Q&A box. We would like you to take a quick survey following the webinar. After today, you can comment online or in writing at any of our in-person meetings. To comment online and access the most up-to-date information, visit West Virginia American Water's website. By visiting this website, you can review the updated draft source water protection plans, the schedule of webinars and in-person meetings, and other information about source water protection efforts. After visiting the main page, you can click on Source Water Protection Plans on the left side of the screen to navigate to the updated plans for each of West Virginia American systems. Again, if you'd like to speak with us in person, join us for public meetings across the state. For a list of in-person public meetings, please visit the website listed on the screen below. We will now take questions from our audience. In order to ask a question, please use the Q&A box. If the Q&A box has not already located at the bottom of your screen, please navigate to the circle icon with three dots and select the Q&A option. Once the Q&A option has appeared in the bottom right corner of your screen, type the question in the message box. Make sure that you hit all panelists as this setting will ensure that speaker, all speakers see your question. Hit send when you are ready to submit. I'll pause here to see if any questions have been submitted to the Q&A box. We will now take questions from our phone participants. Because we will be unmuting everyone, please try to minimize background noise or mute your own phone if you are able to do so. I will pause here for a moment while participants are unmuted. Thank you very much for joining us today. Following the webinar, you will be directed to a short survey. 
Please tell us your thoughts on the webinar and provide feedback on West Virginia American Water's source water protection efforts. You will be able to download these presentation slides on West Virginia American Water's website. Enjoy the rest of your day.